Before I start, thank you so much for 500 subscribers. I really appreciate it. So thank you. Apologies for the lack of content over the past couple of weeks. There's been quite a lot going on, but I have redecorated. All right, so I'm in the process of redecorating. And so far I've managed to turn this place into the perfect combination of work and living. No issues, no problems. <coughs> almost no problems. But anyways, let's just get back to the video. In the last couple of weeks, I've been watching a series on Amazon Prime called Good Omens. Yeah, I know, I'm late to the party. It came out over a year and a half ago, but still. As I was watching it, I couldn't help but notice the amount of production value that the series has. It has the high budget and quality look of a movie, but has the breathing room of a TV series. It's very filmic. One thing that I couldn't help but notice was their use of Bloom. Bloom, or what some people might know as Glow, is an artefact that occurs not only in the optical system, but also the film emulsion. It's most commonly used to describe the effect of the highlights in an image composition, captured, then dispersed or scattered, surrounding the bright areas and overlapping contrasting parts of the image. In simple terms, the bright parts of the image appear to glow. The funny thing is, is when I saw and noticed this effect once, I literally couldn't unsee it. Every film I watched, I saw this very effect happening. It's weird how I've always associated this look with dreamlike sequences that heavily enhance this effect. Now, Good Omens, for example, was shot on the Airy Alexa SXT along with the Alexa Mini and the Leica Summilux Primes and the Airy Allura Zooms. So it's no surprise that the image looks impeccable. But is there any way that mere mortals like you and me, i.e. people using mirrorless and or DSLRs, could get a similar bloom effect in our footage? Well, yes, and here's how. There are of course two ways in general to create an image effect like this, in camera or in post. I personally prefer to do this effect in post because I've just got way more control over how the final image looks, but I am going to go over both. Creating the look in camera. Vintage lenses are one of the contributing culprits in this bloom effect. Haze. Instead of the bloom effect being caused by the film, lens or in post, the glow around the contrasting areas can be caused by texture in the air. For example, haze, fog, smoke, water vapour and dust. DaVinci Resolve, unlike Premiere, actually has a dedicated way of being able to add bloom, which is called the glow effect. Simon Cade over at DSLR Guide has a really good video explaining how he is improving his colour grading compared to a few years ago. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. As I said earlier, I do prefer to do this particular effect in post. So depending on what NLE you're using, things might be a little different, but overall this effect is pretty simple to pull off. Right now I'm going to be showing you how to create this effect inside of Premiere Pro. It will be a little bit more work as unfortunately Premiere Pro doesn't actually have like a proper dedicated way of doing this effect that is on par with DaVinci, but it will look just as nice using this method. So let's jump inside of Premiere Pro and we'll take a look. As you can see, we have a handful of clips on the timeline all ready to go. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this inside of Premiere. The first way that I'm going to show you isn't that great, but it works if you need this effect in a pinch. The second way is my preferred way to achieve the bloom effect, and it does look really nice. It also helps to kind of give the illusion of a much nicer highlight roll-off, which is something that is more prevalent in higher-end cinema cameras. Anyways, the first very quick way is to create an adjustment layer. Go over to the Effects tab and search for Gaussian Blur. Drag that onto the adjustment layer and begin to increase the blurriness a little. Right about there looks good. I'm also just going to click repeat edge pixels so that we don't have a dark border around the clips. Okay, so now you want to go over to the blending modes and change this from normal to linear dodge add. There we see the effect is a little crazy, so I'm just going to turn the stopwatch icon off and reduce the opacity like so. So there we are. 
you can see that we're starting to get that kind of bloom effect underway. But the problem with using this method is that it really blows out the highlights and in turn look kind of poo. With this next technique I'm going to show you, you'll be able to achieve this bloom effect whilst retaining all of the detail in your highlights. So you'll be able to add a really nice glow effect to the lighter areas without making those highlights look overexposed or blown out. So let's jump back into the computer. First take the clip that you're working on, duplicate it and move it to the track above. Now go over to the effects tab and search for Luma Key. Drag and drop that onto the above clip. Just so we can see exactly what we're doing with the above clip, I'm going to temporarily disable the lower track. Double click on the above clip, go to the effect controls and bring down the threshold so that the lighter areas are isolated. One of the benefits of using this technique is that you can include as little or as much of the image as you like in the final bloom or glow effect. So for example, I'm thinking I want to include some of the blue denim material in the glow so that the lighter areas of the jacket glow as well and we'll see how that looks. Okay so now let's go back to the effects tab and search for Gaussian blur. Drag and drop that onto the clip, navigate to the effect controls. We can make the bottom clip visible again so that we can instantly see the effect once we increase the blurriness on the top clip. So let's increase that now. As you can see we're instantly getting that bloom effect. Not only can we control how far the bloom spreads but we can also control how intense the effect is. If you remember earlier, I mentioned that using this technique, we can achieve the glow effect, but without increasing the brightness or the highlights. To do that, we simply have to change the blending mode to lighten. And there we go. We still have all that bloom effect, but it's not like we're adding to the brightness of those highlights. Now what you can do is select both of these effects in the effects controls, right click, and create your own custom preset. You'll probably have to readjust the effects for each clip just to really fine tune the look that you want. Just a word of advice, it's really easy to overdo this effect and like colour grading our eyes do get used to the glow effect. So just be sure to keep the effect subtle. Here are some before and afters so you can see the bloom effect in action. If you like the video then don't forget to give it a like, it really helps me out in beating the YouTube algorithm. Comment and let me know if you can now unsee this bloom effect being used in movies and TV shows. Finally subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all of my future uploads. As always thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.